Hi quilting friends. It is Friday afternoon here in Idaho and it's raining outside and I love to be in my studio when it's raining and I love to look outside. And if I'm quiet, maybe you can hear the creek that runs through our property. It normally isn't that loud, but it's spring runoff. We still have snow in the mountains and they are beautiful against the very, very vivid blue sky. I can hear the creek running. I don't know if you can, but anyway, um, today I wanted to talk to you about some classics. I want to talk to you about some some books, ballet, and some quilt blocks. Classics that are that will withstand the test of time. First, books. Um, classic authors are my favorite: Jane Austen, Tolstoy, um, Hawthorne, uh, Louisa May Alcott. Um, Beatrix Potter, Beatrix Potter, those people have definitely put in their time and energy and um, they're classics in their own right. They're, they're um, just timeless and I love reading those books over and over and over again and throwing in some new. Um, but there's a couple I want to talk to you about today that are the newer ones. I just got this. It's called A Nest for Celeste and it's by Henry Cole. And the subtitle is A Story About Art, Inspiration, and the Meaning of Home. But I love, it's definitely on the side of like a child's book. Um, but some of the illustrations in this book are, they're pencil, I want to say maybe charcoal. They are beautiful. And I cannot wait to um, read this. Um, Apparently it's about a little mouse who finds a new little home and decorates it. And I love decorating my home. But anyway, A Nest for Celeste, and it's by Henry Cole. Another book I ordered from Amazon. Here in my state of Idaho, we kind of have, we have lots of celebrities. But Mary Jane Butters is a lady who lives up near um, Pullman, Washington. Um, she lives in an area of Idaho called the Palouse. And it's up between um, Lewiston and, and Moscow. Um, but she puts out this magazine. She also is an author, and she just put out um, a colleague of mine, her daughter, uh, worked tirelessly on this book, but it's called Sourdough Reinvented Wild Bread. And it also has some charming um, photos of a old historic flour mill that um, she purchased and she renovated. And I also got this just yesterday. I really haven't had a time, chance to look at it. But it goes into bagels, it goes into gluten-free, it goes um, into some of the equipment that you may need. I'm looking out the window over there because it's really coming down. Um, pizza crust. Um, but some of these pictures are just um, beautiful. And I think this book is going to be a classic in its own right someday. Um, Wild Bread, Flour Plus Water and Air by Mary Jane Butters. Two or three weeks ago I made a quick stop at a college campus for a course that I was looking at and I went into the college bookstore. I can't ever um, turn those places down. Um, anyway, I got a Timeless Classic, William Strunk Jr. and E.B. White, The Elements of Style, for those who are of us who are trying to improve our writing. And this one looked good, Writing with Style, Conversations on the Art of Writing. And they were both used, brought back college memories and college feelings of when I was so poor I had to sell my books back, even if I wanted to keep them. I, I had to sell my books back to get through college. Um, currently I am reading this timeless cl classic, All Creatures Great and Small, uh, by James Harriet. A uh, story about a country veterinarian, and I'm going to refer this on to my daughter uh, when I'm done. Timeless classic. And I've read this before, but I wanted to read it again. So I'm currently, I don't know, just barely starting this one. And then two for my, um, for my children's era, because I love Beatrix Potter, Tales of Peter Rabbit and His Friends. And this book I want to say I bought when I was pregnant with my very first child. Um, I didn't write in it. I didn't back then. 
but they're just timeless classics and the illustrations of course are truly Beatrix Potter she was such a, a forward thinker in her time and um, I'd like to have dinner with her someday it's one of my one of my wishes and then this one I'm going to take down to my son who just had um, a daughter uh, who is turning one and this was his favorite book and I, we bought this for him I won't show you the inscription here but um, we bought this for him Christmas of 1993 of course Richard Scarry's cars and trucks and things that go and each page had a little gold bug that you had to find and he would spend hours on my lap um, looking at this book and pretty soon yes he had every page memorized um, so I hope I'm hoping he can do that with his daughter and and family now as as they have children but um, I kind of had to do some binding work on this it was pages were ripped out everything was intact though there was nothing missing and um, kind of had to make the binding better and I'm glad I I'm glad I did that um, <clears throat> So books, books are classic. Um, movies, music, um, those classic things. I love classic literature and art. The next thing I want to talk about is my ballet. Um, of course, I, I've talked about this Daphne's Diary before, but in this specific issue, and this is, hmm, it just says number three, 2018. And I want to say it's probably around, it's out on the book stands now. Uh, beautiful. Just love this magazine. But there's an article in here, The World of Classical Ballet. And I was looking at this magazine and it came across a pair of toe shoes. And when I was younger, uh, middle school to college about I danced ballet and I was on point I have my toe shoes ballet is such a classical very much withstands the test of time um, I danced the sugar plum fairy when I was a senior in high school and then I had an accident in college that kind of put a kibosh on that but boy um, protecting your toes and just the the memories that I had from ballet and classical arts. Um, the music from the Nutcracker is classic. Um, it goes through the positions in here and whatnot, but it says ballet training takes many, many years. And there was just a really good article um, that brought back some memories for me um, from my ballet days and what a classic art form ballet is. Okay, the last thing that most quilters are wanting is for me to get to the classic quilt blocks. Uh, I have this rotary cut quilt blocks, and this is by Judy Hopkins. And I took my copy down and had it spiral bound, which is what I do with most of my quilting books if I know I'm going to use them over and over and over again. And then you can tell it's well loved by my, by my bookmarks. But in the front of this book, there's pages, there's four or five pages of the classical quilt blocks, what they look like, and then when you go inside here, here for example is a basket, very classic quilt block, um, and there's finish sizes, dimensions and cuts for fabric for five, looks like, sorry I don't have my glasses on again, five, six and a quarter, seven and a half, eight and three quarters, ten and twelve and a half inch blocks. This book is um, very good for a block exchange if you um, have quilting friends that um, you know you want to participate in a block exchange uh, but it's just a valuable valuable very classic book in the quilting world where you can pick a block make it the size you want go from there okay some very classic quilt blocks um, obviously there's a log cabin I don't have an unfinished one to show you of, of that but Log Cabin comes to mind, a Churn Dash, a Monkey Wrench, um, just lots and lots of, there's probably 501 of them in that book. Um, Ohio Star, some of those blocks are just absolutely timeless and those quilts I've already put in, those blocks I've already put into quilt 
tops. But of course the classic one also is a nine patch. Um, these were left over from this quilt that I'm putting together and there was a hundred. But this right here can be treated as a square within a square. Nine patches have been around since we first started making quilt blocks. Um, very timeless, very classic quilt block, uh, a nine patch, and then a square in a square. Obviously, it's been around a long time. Um, but I'm working on this quilt. There's a hundred of these that I... This part is all done, and it's attached to its negative space. So now I just got to put the rows. And this is set on point, so this, this quilt block will be set on point in the finished quilt. So that's what these are, very classic nine patch. Um, this is an Ohio Star, and this is from a block of the month that I am doing from my previous days at the Quilt Crossing. It's called The quilt is called Gypsy Wife, and um, it's all going to be out of Joe Morton fabrics, but this is a classic Ohio Star. I wish I would have left this square in the middle, um, the creamy background. I like really small prints, but it's okay. I, I don't mind. Um, but there's going to be probably 12 different blocks to this quilt, and this is the Ohio Star that I've already got done. Um, I, I talked about this one in a previous video. This was a version of Jacob's Ladder, and I've got a quilt on right now on my quilting machine frame that is all, there's probably, I think she did about 80 Jacob's Ladder quilt blocks, and I'm in the middle of quilting that one for a neighbor friend, an Amish neighbor friend, and it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be a very beautiful quilt, but this is kind of a classic. Um, mine I did in almost something that reads as a solid, and then of course the print, uh, but this is a version of Jacob's Ladder, and then the last quilt block I'm going to talk about is a spool, and it's one of my very favorites. And these were, got thread all over them, these were a block exchange I did with a quilting group I had many years ago, and I still haven't done anything with them. And I probably have, I don't know, 15 or 20 here uh, that I need to do something with. But in a traditional spool quilt, one will go this way and one will go this way. And maybe you can put a sashing in between them, or maybe you would just join them up right next to one another. But again, um, I love the smaller prints and the creamy background that reads as a solid. Uh, yeah, I probably have close to 20 of these that I really need to do something with. But quilt blocks, there are some quilt blocks that will withstand the test of time. Um, more currently, we have, who has not done a yellow brick road quilt or a turning 20 quilt? Um, those are probably made for more novelty prints that are bigger, so you can see um, the whole print that's on a novelty print. Um, smaller blocks I like better with smaller prints. The quilting world is really um, right now in a, I want to say a transition period, where they're going from the timeless classic quilt blocks to more modern and there's nothing wrong with that it's just not the way I quilt um, I have so much that I still want to make that are classics and timeless just like the books I like to read just like the the ballet that I used to do those things withstand the test of time and I still have many quilts that I want to make that are timeless blocks that are um, more traditional colors traditional um, settings and just enjoy the piecing process with those classic quilt top blocks. Um, Currently, I would say there's nothing more classic as Ford pickups, front porches, and Friday night football games from high schools. And I think we need to pay more attention to classics. We need to honor them and maybe study them a little bit so that we can appreciate those classic things and, and the beauty that lies within the classic books, ballet, and quilt blocks.